Here we go, guys. The video that should end it all, but it won't. I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna do my best for some of these guys. It's gonna be difficult. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out here on a limb and I'm, I'm gonna take this beating from people. That's okay. Here's why I don't mind it. Just backing it up with facts and things. Oh, I, got, I gotta stop. I gotta stop before we even get going. Please just watch this video. Please just watch the whole thing with somewhat of an open mind. I know you've been fed a lot of things. You've been, you've been told a lot of things from people and they sound good and, and you just, you just want to believe them because, well, I, I have a reason why you want to believe them, but you, you just want to, you just want to listen to what someone says and go along with it. I, I know why you do this, but just hear me out. So please watch the whole video. Now, I got to tell y'all, and I got to warn y'all right off the bat, this video might be disturbing at times. It might be hard to hear. Um, we're going to use phrases like common sense and facts. Um, we're going to do things that make you think. We're going we're gonna to do things and say things that you, you've been told a certain thing for a long time, but you've never really thought about. Right? You've never really thought about it. Maybe because you don't know or or whatnot. Also, I'd like to state that if you listen to this video all the way through, you're going to have a problem. You're going to have a dilemma. And it's going to be a tough one. You're going to have to figure out what to do with it. This dilemma is going to be, you've done one thing forever, and you've got to get on this mountain and scream from the highest of mountains. And you've got to degrade people for doing this. And then once you learn the facts, you might not be able to do that anymore because you're going to realize maybe you were wrong. And so now you can't go do that, right? Or you're going to feel a certain way about having to do that, about degrading other people and pointing at other people and telling them how bad they are, right? That, that, that they are ruining the fishery, that they're killing the fish, that they're doing everything wrong while you're over here doing everything right. I don't know how to help you with that. But let's go. Let's get this show on the road. Catching fish off beds. Is it bad? Or are we, are we killing the fish? Well, I, it's gotten brought up more now because of live scope. Because now fishermen, fishermen are really good for some reason now about telling them that their way of fishing is better than your way of fishing. And that I can catch 50 fish over here doing this and I'm good and you catch 50 fish over here and you're doing bad. I don't, I don't know how that happened, but their way of fish catching 50 fish is better than your way and their way doesn't hurt the fishery, but yours does. I've also, by the way, never met a group. This is the one that kills me. This is the best one. The people that want to ban fishing. They want to ban fishing for months. Guys, I don't know if y'all realize this. These are fishermen that are that are asking for this. Fishermen, guys that fish want to ban fishing. I, I I'm not even going to go into that right now. But let's let's stay on track. Catching a fish off of a bed. I'm going to start with with the kicker. First off, let's try to understand what fish do when they spawn, because the number one thing I hear is wrong. It's wrong from everyone that says this. And I understand why they say this, but because the, they don't, they don't know. They've never actually caught a fish off of a bed or they don't know how the process works. So let's start off with the process. Okay. Now, a lot of people will tell you that males only make the beds. It's not true. A male and a, fe a female, a male, they can both make beds. So let's start off. They make a bed. One, one or the other doesn't really matter. A bed is made. On that bed, sometimes is a female by herself. Catch them like that all the time. Okay, sometimes there's just a male on there. Sometimes there's two on there. Say there's two on that bed and they're not spawning. Now, hopefully I don't have to give everyone a biology lesson about what happens when a male and a female get together to spawn. So when they're on the bed together and they're not spawning, and if you know if they're spawning because they're together rubbing on each other. You'll see them kind of doing this right next to each other. Okay, that's the spawning process. 
Sometimes they'll stay on a bed together for days. Not doing that. Let's call that dating. Okay? They're dating at this point in time. When they're dating, they're not spawning. It's two different things. So when they're dating, they're just hanging out. That's when some of us catch fish off beds. When they're dating. Not spawning, dating. Because I want to give you the biggest secret there is. You got, you have, and, and remember, I'm going to drop some common sense on y'all. So be ready for this. That's why I say stick around. You're going to learn something. Before they start to spawn, no eggs have been dropped on that bed. None. The female in that bed is big old belly, full of eggs. The minute they start to spawn, talk to every single bass fisherman out there. Every single bass fisherman that's ever caught a fish off of a bed, we will tell you the same thing. It's virtually impossible to catch a fish rolling. Now, through this video, you're going to see some comments, and they can't wait to get on there and comment going, Oh, my brother, sister, uncles, daddy's uh, best friend's neighbor caught him on. I'm not saying you can't catch one in your lifetime doing that. But 99.99999% of the time, you can't catch those fish when they're doing that. Two, as soon as she's done laying her eggs, because the same time she's laying her eggs, he's doing his thing. That's what they're doing right there. That's why us bed fishermen pass those fish up, because we know it's a done deal. They do all that stuff. The minute, the second she drops all them eggs, Man, she, she, man, she one of them girls. She one of them girls, man, she one of them girls. She's out. Peace out. She's out of here. She's gone. That's why us bed fishermen are always like sitting there hoping that she's there the next day when we see one. We hope that they don't spawn because we know once they spawn, they're gone. We know once they spawn, they're gone. Once she drops those eggs. Now, why is this important? It's important because if I catch that fish before she does that, all her eggs are still in her. They're still in her. How do I know this? Well, let's, let's go over some common sense. Now I'm dropping some common sense. Ask any bed fisherman, ask anyone that's ever caught one off a bed. Look at every picture you've ever seen of someone catching one off of a bed. You know what they do? That fish has a big old belly on her. Every single time. Every single time. You will never catch a female on a bed with a with a belly that's not big. Now you might catch the male that looks like a big old female and is long and like, oh, I caught this this big seven pounder. And it's just seven pound male. But you won't catch the female like that. She's always full of eggs, always big. So she hadn't dropped the eggs yet. That's important because we're gonna get into that. Why are we going to get into that? We're going to get into that because the comments people make, right? Their argument. See, when I start debunking all their arguments, there's no more arguments left. Say I did catch this fish. Say I put her back. Say I took her to weigh in. Now, we're obviously not talking about keeping her and killing her. But say I take her to weigh in. Weigh her in, whatever. She gets released that same day. Guess what? She still has all of her eggs in her. She can still go spawn. She can still go spawn. She didn't spawn there. We didn't mess up the genetics because we're going to get in the genetics real quick. Oh, the genetics thing is going to be real fun. This is for all the people. Like I said, this is some, some of these guys that are supposed to be listening to this have already shut it off because they already don't like it, that they're already it, it's already bothering them. Because remember, once they don't have any more arguments, what are they going to do? So, that fish can still go spawn again. Now, a lot of people might sit there and say, oh, once it's weighed in, it does this or it does that. Y'all have no idea. I, do, I get, so they can swim, eat, live, do all these different things, but they sure can't go spawn after they've been weighed in. They can live their normal life except for spawning. Well, they did research. Y'all don't know. That's that point of it. But we're not done yet. Oh, we even got to the best part, the juiciest part. This is for all the guys that think they're better than everyone else. That think that, oh, I don't bed fish, so I'm not hurting anything. First off, if you're fishing even close 
to the springtime, even close to somewhere that's somewhat in the springtime, you're catching a fish off of a bed probably. But it doesn't really matter if you catch a fish off of a bed. It goes further than that. If you fish two, three, four weeks after the last fish has spawned, you're part of the problem as well. You're part of killing our fisheries and our fish and you are hurting everything and the ecosystem. You are doing it. You are doing it as well. You're just as bad as the guy catching a fish off a bed. Let me tell you why. Now, that 10 pounder that was on that bed, you're so worried about someone catching that 10 pounder on that bed. I'm not worried about someone doing that. I'm worried about something different. So that 10 pounder and that little bitty old two pound male, no one cares about the two pound male. He's just a little old two pounder. Who cares about him, right? They go to spawn him. She drops off of her eggs. He does her thing. She jets. This fish, though, this fish was sent here to protect those eggs. You're so worried about the 10 pounder, but the two pounder's there to protect. That female's not protecting those eggs. I don't know why so many people get that wrong. So you're you're going along, throwing your old Cinco out there. All of a sudden, that Cinco drops over there on a bed. And that male goes over there and picks it up and you set the hook on it and you're like, hey, I'm either allowed to keep fish this time of the year, which is fine. Keep them. I'm either allowed to, I, I get them up and there's perch all around that bed. And as soon as you catch that fish, those perch are in there eating those eggs. Ooh, you mean, you mean you caused by just catching that fish really quick, perch instantly go in there and start eating those eggs while you're reeling them in and doing your thing. All those 10 pound genetic fish, those babies that were sitting on that bed, you just started disrupting that by catching this little old two pound male that no one ever cares about. Maybe you weigh him in, in a tournament, right? I didn't catch the big fish off of a female. I didn't do anything wrong. Well, we're not worried about the 10 pound female. We let her go. We're so worried about those eggs and those genetics. When we see the two pounder, that's part of the genetics. The male is guarding those genetics. So say that male makes it through all that, makes it through you throwing that sinkle over there and catching it that you didn't know it was there. And those, those little eggs over there started to become fry. Those fry start swimming around the lake, okay? Say it's, say, say it's like well after the spawn and that male guards those fry. And you're going down the lake. Now you're throwing your little top water, your little chatterbait, your little whatever you want to throw. And it's you're looking around. There's no fish on, on beds. You're throwing them around the grass, around the stump, whatever. And you don't realize there's a big ball of fry. Now that big ball of fry is nothing but the genetics of a 10-pounder. Nothing but that. And it's out there on the stump in six foot of water. And hey... I don't fish by the bank during the springtime. I do my I do my due diligence of not hurting the fishery. I'm out here. And you throw over there by that stump that's freaking 50 yards away from the bank. And you catch that little male guarding those 10-pound genetic fry. Hmm. You might have just disrupted the whole thing and killed almost, I don't want to say the M word, but you killed maybe, possibly, all those genetics of that 10 pound fish. We're going to go a little bit further. Okay, let's go a little bit further. We've talked about the big 10 pounder, right? The big 10 pounder, because that's all we care about. We don't care about all the other fish, just the big ones. The big ones with the genetics. Now, I don't know if y'all realize this, that the 10 pound fish, they grow, to, they grow to 10 pounds in like one year. So from the, from the day they're born, Right? By the next year, they're 10 pounds. Oh, oh wait, that's not true. That, that doesn't sound right. Oh, so, wait, I, I mix that up. A 10-pound fish has a baby, and that little baby starts off like this, like a little fry, an egg, and then a fry, and then it starts growing. And after a year, it might be this big. And after two years, it might be this big. Right? Now, that, that fish that's this big, that's two years old, has genetics to become, say it with me guys, 
a 10 pounder. Now maybe there's 20 of these from that one 10 pounder and they're swimming around, but they all, they're not 10 pounders, they're two pounders. Now we don't care about those two pounders, right? We only care about the 10 pounder, not the two pound, the two pounder with all the genetics. She's a female, she's two pounds, she has all the genetics to make 10 pounders. I mean, we should be caring about the genetics of the 10 pounder because that's what will produce them. It doesn't matter how big the two pounder is, if it's four pounds the next year, six pounds the next year, it still can produce at, at a two pounder can produce those 10 pound genetics. We don't talk about that fish. Uh, who cares about that two pounder being caught? It's just a two pounder. Well, it's not just a two pounder. You might be catching that two pounder and thinking I no big deal, right? The guy that thinks he's doing everything great. He throws the Cinco up there and catches it off of a bed. He's like, ah, it's not a two pounder. That guy right there, now he, he's, ooh, he's the devil. He just caught that 10 pounder. All I did was just catch this two pounder. You mean one, the one with the same genetics? That, that one, this two pounder came from that 10 pounder and it's just a lot younger. But now you catch in the same year, right? That 10 pounder's two years older. Maybe it's 11 pounds now. And this is a two pounder. That guy did everything wrong. You caught this two pounder with the same genetics that can produce the same offspring as that one. And you did nothing wrong. Because you, you caught it on a Cinco blind casting. Maybe even off of a bed. Now granted, I'll still go back to the fact of you caught it off of a bed. Guess what? That one still didn't lay its eggs either. It still didn't lay its eggs. You go take it up to the weigh-in, right? And you go tell everyone that guy saw that guy catch that fish off of a bed. It's horrible. That guy's horrible. He's killing those fish and all those eggs and those genetics. While you're over there not realizing you kind of, even though you didn't do the same thing, it's great. It's a great story. It's great to sit on that mountaintop and, and, and degrade everyone else. Nothing I said was a lie. It's all true. Because we all just want to sit there and go, look at that 10 pounder. But to be honest with you, catching the 10 pounder off the bed possibly did zero harm compared to all the other scenarios. Because all the other scenarios are actually happening. They're actually what disrupts the fishing. Now, I have no problem with that. Because I'm a fisherman. And we've been doing this for a long, long, long time. And guess what? Our lakes are still really, really good. And I haven't been able to figure out how we've at any way hurt our bass population by doing this. Now, the bass population hurts in certain lakes because of Mother Nature. We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about the floods and the droughts and the things to our lakes that aren't real lakes because most of them aren't natural and they're man-made. And so, yes, they're going to have problems because they're man-made. They're, they're not out there in real life, right? Because even in real life, even in, even in Mother Nature, Mother Nature disrupts things. Good years, bad years, whatever. It's all part of it. They, Mother Nature hurts our fisheries and helps our fisheries way more than we do. But we're not going to get into that. Let's just blame other people, blame other fishermen. And, and tell them what they're doing wrong and how bad they are. Because that's what we like to do as fishermen. We like to sit on our, some of us on our mountaintops and, and, and just, guys, look at me and how great of a person I am and how I don't do this and how I, and I save, I save the bass population. You know, the bass population that didn't need saving. When I say all this, you have to understand what the spawn is. You have to understand how, how fish work during the spawn so there's all these arguments out there and they're wrong because you don't because possibly you don't maybe understand what's going on and there's going to get some guys in the comments here and that's fine comment away i don't mind if you make bad comments i don't mind i, I like it it allows me to see that you have no idea what you're talking about because yes i use a little common sense here I thought about it a different way. Why? Because unlike you, you just heard something and just repeat it to make yourself sound better.
it might sound better. You're just wrong. You know, what's crazy for people that don't sight fish is all of us sight fishermen understand what's going on. We actually know more about fishing during the spawn than pretty much everyone else. And I mean that. I'm not being conceited. We just, we're watching what's going on. When I say we're watching what's going on, we're watching what's going on in Mother Nature. We see it. So when I'm going down the bank and I'm sight fishing, regardless of my purpose, so many times I'm going down the bank, uh, I'm gonna go practicing for tournaments. Uh, I don't catch any fish during the spawn. Some of those practice days. When you're catching fish, I'm not catching any. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. I'm marking. I I'm literally out on the water not catching a fish. Just marking them. Two, I notice how many fish are in the lake. I see how many fish are spawning. I see how many fish over a period of three or four days in that small little section of the lake, just that small little section, because I can't look over the entire lake, but that small little section of the lake, I might see 100 fish that day. And the next day I go back through there and my, maybe I see half those. I see maybe 50 more new ones the next day. Those other 50 spawned, did their thing. No one caught them. I know that. I know no one caught them. You don't. You're on your computer or you're whatever. You're out there in the middle of the lake thinking you're doing everything. You have no clue, but I do. And then I see these fish over here. I'm like, no one's ever going to see those fish. They went and did their thing. Two two-pounders over there. And, and I see all these fish that no one ever catches. I see all these fish that do their thing. And then everyone, for whatever reason, every bass fisherman thinks that other bass fishermen are Kevin Van Dam, apparently, or Jacob Wheeler. That they're just going out there catching 452 bass a day. And that all of these fish, hundreds of thousands of thousands upon thousands of fish in a the lake, they all just get caught in this two month period. And they don't all get to spawn. But I, I see it differently. Because I, I go down the bank and I see all these fish sitting there, just sitting there on a bed that would take hours to catch. They don't get caught. They don't get caught. Some of them do, some of them don't. They sure aren't getting caught. That female that sure, is sure not getting caught after it lays its eggs. That's not the one getting caught. That's not the one you need to worry about. Something to think about, guys. I know this is hard for y'all. There's a lot of common sense in there, and there's a lot of things to think about. But I'm just telling you. Think about these things before you go and make your next rant about some guy catching a fish off a of bed and that he's killing it. it. Had nothing to do with those eggs. Didn't. When you catch that big fish, a big fish is fine. Even if you take it to a tournament, you didn't disrupt the eggs, the babies. It's still inside the big fish. When it gets released, it can still go do its thing. It might have delayed it for a day or two, but it's still going to go do its thing. You, you just, you, you have to realize that because if not, you, it sounds like you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's what it sounds like. Now there's going to be some guys out there that just say, Hey, let's just ban fishing altogether. I, Hey, I can tell you one thing. I ain't in your community. You ain't in mine. We don't see eye to eye at all. At all. You stay up wherever you live. And when I say up, because I don't think that mentality goes on down here. But you stay up wherever you live and you, you work on your states to ban fishing during certain times of the year. We fish 365 days out of the year down here. Our lakes are fine. Now, I'm going to do a whole nother video. I have to. On the amount of fish and killing fish. and what I, I've done it before. But I, I will say I need to do it. I need to do it at, at my wife's work. I need to get I need to get a board. I need to get a board so I can write on there so y'all can see it. Some people are visual learners. They're not auditory, right? They need to visually see what goes on. So I'm a, I'm gonna work on that. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed my little rant lecture today. I hope this sheds some light on some things. If not, I'll pick up class tomorrow. 
Okay, we can start right back where we did. But for now, class dismissed.